Okay, we've done quite a bit of work since our last video. We've added the motor mount. It still needs to be primed and painted. We've of course installed the motor and uh, the half shaft support that goes over to the passenger side of the vehicle. That used to be bolted to the block. Uh, we have added the lower battery rack and batteries. There's five batteries down there and the upper battery rack is kind of a work in progress but we're going to try and do a test drive with five of the eight batteries and that uh, rack there will hold the controller in place. Also done quite a bit of work. Last time uh, we did a video we saw the fan being controlled by the controller and now I've built the power distribution box which consists of a large circuit breaker which will be our safety cutoff switch in case something happens to go wrong the uh, switch itself will be connected to a cable that I can pull from inside the car to shut power off to the controller and the motor there is a contactor which is basically a heavy duty switch that will be energized by the controller it's like a large relay a precharge resistor and precharge resistor relay and the reason for that is there are a series of large capacitors over here on the controller that when the key is first turned on without a precharge re resistor if we simply applied power to the capacitors they'd act like a short circuit and cause some harm to the controller so what's going to happen is when I first turn the key to the run position this precharge resistor relay will energize sending power from the traction battery pack, the high voltage pack, over through the circuit breaker which is connected directly to the contactor and then power will flow through the relay and then through this precharge resistor over to the controller to charge up the capacitors and at this point the contactor will still be off and then after a period of time, a few seconds, the controller through this yellow wire will energize the contactor and that will apply full power over to the controller itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to connect the battery. This would be like turning the ignition switch on and I've got a voltmeter connected showing the voltage drop across the contactor and what this is is basically the voltage drop across the resistor. Now as those um, capacitors charge that voltage should go down to zero. So here I am connecting. Notice the voltage go down. This little yellow light that's blinking indicates that the timing has occurred on the contactor. You may have heard that click and the light has stopped. That is now applying full power from the battery through the circuit breaker directly to the contactor now through the contactor so I've got full power to the controller itself. Now the controller is connected again to these fans as we did last time and we are going to now use the throttle to see if by moving that we can get the fans to spin. Okay, so there we go, success. So next steps are to mount the controller on top of this power distribution box, get it in the vehicle, connect it to the motor in the vehicle itself, and hopefully go for a test drive.